Hello there, welcome back to the new lecture. So in this lecture, we'll discuss the chiller sizing and selection. So after the end of this lecture, uh, you would be able to understand the step for sizing and selecting and chiller. So let's start. Okay. So what are the steps which we have to follow for sizing and selecting and chiller for HVAC system? So in that, the, the first step is to determine the total cooling load. Okay. The first step in chiller sizing is to determine the total cooling load of the building or system. This can be done through manual heat load calculation or software tools like Carrier E20, HAP software, etc. Okay. The second step which we have to follow, uh, here we have to understand the diversity factor. So what is actually diversity factor? Uh, the diversity factor na, helps in determining the actual cooling capacity uh, required for chillers and other HVAC equipment. So by considering that not all area will be at peak loading cooling load at the same time. It allow for the sizing of equipment that is smaller than the sum of the individual peak load. Thus saving cost on equipment and energy consumption. See. It is written here, the diversity factor accounts for the fact that not all parts of a building will require peak cooling simultaneously. You know that if you have a high rise building and you have installed, suppose different AHU-FCU you are using in your building. So we know that all of these AHU-FCU are not 100% in working condition simultaneously. Okay. So that is why diversity factor is very important. Why? If you want to save the cost or equipment on equipment and energy consumption. So diversity factor is very important. So a common example is office building where different zone may have varying cooling needs throughout the day. So the diversity factor is applied to reduce the size of the chiller based on the uh, this variation in load. Okay. Uh, the formula is given. Formula is simple. Diversal, diversified load is equal to total cooling load which you have got building, building total cooling load into diversity factor. Okay. And here one more point is written which is very important. Uh, the diversity factor how much we have to consider. So generally diversity factor generally ranges from 0 0.7 to 0 0.9 depending on the building type, usage and design condition exact we can't say but then also here uh, I will show you the summary table for diversity factor how you you have to consider suppose uh, which type of building you have if it is an office building okay if it is an office building so for that diversity factor range is given 0 0.75 to 0 0.85 okay in normal condition we have to consider for hotel building range is given so when you see now uh, the complete table so diversity factor ranges is between 0 0.7 to 0 0.9 so as per because I have told told you now it is ba basically exact diversity factor is based on your building type if it is a residential apartment so how much the range is given for hospital diversity factor range is given okay so that also we have to con uh, we have to understand the diversity factor it is very important all of you clear Okay, now let's see the next step. The third step is to apply the diversity factor. So how to apply? See, let us assume here uh, the total cooling load uh, we have calculated from HAP software or any other software or manual calculation. Let us assume the total cooling load for a building is 500 TR ton of refrigeration. Okay. For example, uh, uh, in our example, let us assume a diversity factor we are considering 0.85 for the building. Let's say it is depend on the type of building. So I am assuming diversity factor 0.85. So to calculate the diversity fide load, total cooling load 500 into diversity factor. So you will get see 425 TR. So in this way, we can 
save the cost on equipment and energy consumption okay so now you have to do the sizing you have to do the sizing of chiller as per this diversified load which you have calculated okay so the actual cooling load that the chiller needs to handle is 425TR remember this point okay now come to next step step number four after calculating the actual cooling load okay including diversity factor everything now you have to determine the type of chiller which type of chiller you want to use because I have told you we have a air cooled water cooled so here they have given based on the application the type of chiller must be selected air cooled chiller generally suitable for smaller application where water is not readily available or where installation is simpler so in that case we have to go for air cooled chiller okay so it is a good choice when the outdoor space is available for heat dissipation water cool chiller is efficient for larger application or building with higher cooling load okay so you have to prefer the water so these are typically used for larger building or industrial application where efficiency is crucial is it clear so after de determining the actual cooling load of chiller now you have to determine the type of chiller so already i have taken we have a air cooled chiller water cooled chiller so air cooled chiller is generally suitable for smaller application water cooled chiller is used for larger building or industrial application where efficiency is crucial okay so in this way you have to remember the this step okay so now the fifth step number five is efficiency and performance consideration let's see cop what is cop coefficient of performance okay the higher cop means the more efficient the chiller the higher cop the more efficient the chiller is so for instance a chiller with a cop of 5 is more efficient than one with a cop of 3 so remember okay the higher the cop coefficient of performance means there is a uh, that a uh, more efficient the chiller is okay then IER energy efficiency ratio it is similar to COP but used in different reason higher EAR higher energy efficiency ratio means better efficiency now the question is here how uh, how can we calculate the coefficient of performance for chiller energy efficiency ratio so for that we have a formula okay let's see that suppose here one question is given an air conditioning system of 3 tr consume energy of 2 kilowatt now we have to find out the coefficient of performance energy efficiency ratio so it is very easy to find out the uh, first let's see what is given here cooling capacity is given 3 tr okay you can convert it into btu per hour because maybe in formula the value is given so we know that 1 tr is equal to 12,000 BTU per hour so you have to multiply by 12,000 so you will get 36,000 BTU per hour this is our cooling capacity and the power input is 2 kilowatt okay you can convert it into watt uh, sorry BTU per hour so for that 1 kilowatt is equal to 3.412 BTU per hour all of you know just multiply you will get the value clear so now to calculate the coefficient of performance cop we have a formula cooling capacity in which unit btu per hour that is why i have converted the turn of refrigeration value in btu per hour divide by energy input in btu per hour just substitute this value already we have calculated okay already we have calculated the cooling capacity energy input so when you substitute you will get the coefficient of performance value 5.27 same way as i already explained you greater the value of coefficient of performance better is that for machine so let's say if you have got 5.27 so from the different manufacturer catalog you have to see exact value you will not get but near about better is to take 5.5 if it is given 
okay because the greater the value of cop better is that for machine uh, okay so now we have to calculate the energy efficiency ratio so for that the formula is cooling capacity in btu per hour divided by energy input in which unit watt okay while we are calculating the coefficient of performance so for that uh, formula is what cooling capacity in btu per hour energy input also we need in btu per hour for but here the case is different energy input value you have to enter in watt okay uh, just substitute so here you will get 18 value btu per hour per watt okay so greater the value of energy efficiency ratio better is that for machine now let's see the next step uh, selecting the chiller based on capacity and efficiency let's say suppose uh, the calculated cooling load uh, is 29.2 tr okay and you need an air cool chiller let's say assume after checking manufacture catalog you may find uh, suppose chiller a whose capacity is 30 tr and coefficient of performance is given in manufacture catalog 3.5 same way when i have seen the next chiller chiller b their capacity also same 30 tr but the coefficient of performance is different 4.2 now the question is here which type of chiller you have to prefer from here chiller a or chiller b from the manufacturer catalog as i told you we have to always use the chiller b would be the better choice due to higher efficiency because when you compare both the coefficient of performance of chiller b is more as compared to chiller a and i have already explained you the greater greater the value of coefficient of performance better is that for machine so in this way you have to prefer same way if you have a eer value so you always you have to uh, greater eer value is the better choice okay next step is to determine the number of chillers how many number of chillers uh, we have to use okay so that we have to define uh, we have to calculate the number of chillers so actually here we have a single you can also use the single chiller okay double chill uh, multiple chiller so let's see here in this example the first one is the single chiller single chiller often selected if reliability is not a critical factor okay so remember if the cooling coil uh, always single chiller we have to use for a small cooling load okay if the total cooling load requirement is relatively small and can be efficient efficiently handled by one chiller typically less than 100 ton so you have to go for single chiller example like a small commercial building retail spaces or residential application so better is to select chiller one chiller is enough okay a single chiller generally less uh, has lower initial capital capital cost compared to installing multiple chiller okay as it involves less equipment and installation complexity so many advantages are there uh, suppose if space is a significant constraint so a single chiller may be more appropriate as it required less physical area than multiple unit clear next one is the multiple chiller so for larger cooling load better is to use the multiple chiller because multiple chiller can provide the necessary capacity and flexibility to meet varying demand like large commercial building hospital or industrial facility better is to go for multiple chiller okay so here one point is given if redundancy is required or if it is more energy efficient to run uh, small smaller chiller at part load so better is to go for multiple chiller okay clear for load variation suppose if the cooling load varies significantly throughout the day or seasonally so multiple chiller can be staged to operate only as needed improving energy efficiency okay so better is to go for okay now maybe uh, the decision 
to select a single or multiple children is influenced uh, by various factor okay related to load requirement operational flexibility reliability and budget so evaluating these factor carefully can lead to a more efficient and effective cooling system tailored to the specific need of the facility okay i hope that you have understood let's see one example suppose for a 3 lakh 50 thousand btu per hour cooling load 130 tr chiller would suffix okay however for redundancy for redundancy or efficiency as part load you might to select 215 tr chiller okay now how to calculate the water flow requirement for chiller so see for a water cooled chiller the water flow rate through the condenser and evaporator need to be calculated so here the formula is given to find out the flow rate in gallon per minute ton of cooling means cooling load value in ton of refrigeration into 24 divided by delta t so let's say assume here delta t is 10 degree fahrenheit and chiller capacity cooling load is 30 tr so when you substitute how much we'll get the flow rate 72 gpm for this 30 tr chiller okay so in this way we have to calculate the flow rate water flow rate okay for chiller is it clear now the next is the how we have we have to select the pump and piping so the pump should be sized to handle the required flow rate with the right head pressure so for the pump selection remember uh, we have to find out the pump head calculation because in case of water cooled chiller you are using so we have a primary pump secondary pump condenser uh, suppose water cooled chiller if you are using to so condenser water pump is also needed all of you know that primary pump is responsible to supply the water from the chiller to uh, sorry to supply the water from the equipment ahu or fcu to the chiller secondary pump is responsible to supply the water from the chiller to the ahu okay and condenser water pump is responsible to supply the water from the cooling tower to the condenser chiller condenser then from the condenser to the cooling tower okay so here for the pump selection as i either it is a primary secondary or condenser water we have to do the pump head calculation so that this is our separate topic okay this is the separate topic here i am just showing you these are the things which we have to do for selecting the chiller the piping should also be sized to ensure efficient water flow with minimum pressure drop okay so these are the steps which you have to follow for sizing and selecting and chiller so now the topics which we have seen here i have discussed in detail about the step each and every step for sizing and selecting and chiller so if you prefer this step so you will get the chiller sizing okay so this is all about and chiller sizing and selection i hope all of you enjoy the session see you in next one